Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Alright, welcome to a special Cut the Tape. Behind me you can see the wall of statuesque, which is uh, where I keep a lot of my statues and busts. Today on Cut the Tape, we're going to do some studio series stuff, but I wanted to compare and contrast, so... This is Studio Series number 44. This is Dark of the Moon, Optimus Prime, and he comes with his jetpack. Alright, so I want to compare this today, which is a leader class toy of $50, to this. This is the Dark of the Moon. In the United States, it was a Toys R Us exclusive. I believe it got released on uh, Black Friday. So this is uh, Leader Class Optimus Prime from Revenge of the Fallen. I know there's various opinions about this particular figure. I happen to love it. Yes, it is hard as hell to transform, but it comes with the initially Takara exclusive jetpack, which is supposed to be made from the trailer, but you know, it doesn't transform into the trailer. So this is the uh, figure comes with the jetpack attached. And I just really wanted to compare size. You know, the economy changes, and as the economy changes, the parts count on toys changes, the prices of uh, oil and plastic changes. It's inflation, really. You know, these things get smaller and the price goes up, and it's a reality in which we live in. But it still doesn't mean we can't compare and contrast, right? So, with that being said, Let's go ahead and cut the tape. This is uh, Studio Series number 44. Uh, Dark of the Moon is very special to me. It's the film I had uh, the biggest hand in. Let's go ahead and slice this guy open. This box is definitely beat. I got another, I got a minty version sitting over there. I'm not in my usual recording spot because we're having more work down in the basement. As you know, this room is never gonna be done. My, my children will inherit this room and a list of instructions on things and chores that need to be done. So it comes as all studio series do with a background that you're never going to use. Uh, this one has uh, the worm. I don't know if there's any technical name for it other than shockwaves worm. Figure comes in the blister. All right. It's in there pretty good. So he's got an assortment of weapons in the film. This actually wasn't in the film, but this was in the in the concept art. The trailer transformed into the like this battle rig, and uh, I believe this is the first time from Hasbro Takara Haztac that we've actually seen that shown in uh, in physical form. It might have made a brief appearance in Dark of the Moon at the beginning in Chernobyl. Uh, but there's a really great third-party version of this that goes great with uh, with the Revenge of the Fallen Optimus. Also in the box, instructions. Again, uh, it's a constant complaint of mine that there are no tech specs. There's no bios. There's nothing. So as a kid who jumps into this, Let's say you turn 10 and you're ready for the movie toys and you get one for your birthday. I mean, what do you really know about this character other than what you see in the movie? And what does Optimus Prime say in the movie? The Decepticons must all die. I remember being in the theater. So when we went to the premiere of Dark of the Moon, I think it was at the Lincoln Center in New York City. 
and all the Hasbro people were sitting right up front because we didn't have good seats because we were the Hasbro guys. So we were sitting up front and Optimus Prime says that line, we will kill them all. And you could just hear like a sigh come out of the Hasbro team. It's like, oh, did he really have to say that? So for the first time in the in the series, uh, we're getting the axe, we're getting the shield, we're getting the gun. And the sword. So let's just, actually, I don't think we need to, they're held down with the clear twist ties. We actually don't need to cut anything. We can just pull them right out. I'm pretty happy to get these accessories. You know, there's there's a lot of... Uh, we will cut this. There's a lot of third-party guys, and even like smaller manufacturers, who go ahead and make the weapons, the, the axes, the shield, the guns. So I'm, I'm glad that these particular weapons, although be it much smaller than they should be, are seeing some official life in plastic. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Seven. This one doesn't want to cut. All right. So seven to release the trailer. And then the Optimus is held in by another two. All right, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of this. This is, I would call this a small Voyager Optimus. Now the wings are definitely more movie accurate. Right off the bat, that's what Studio Series is. It's movie accurate, right? But I mean, when you compare the size, I mean, oh my God. I mean, it's way more movie accurate, which I love. It, it fits in with Studio Series. The problem with Studio Series is that the Optimus Prime scale is all over the place. He's Voyager, he's Leader, he's Voyager, he's Leader. And while this is a Leader, it is still a Voyager size because it comes with that trailer, which is the extra accessory. So a quick story about this. The reason I have this guy here is not just to compare, but I want to tell a quick story. So we have these on the US version, right? Uh, so I believe his name was Jonathan Newkirk. Great guy. I don't know if he's still at Hasbro. He was in charge of Transformers packaging at the time. And he came up to my office one day and he's like, ah. I gotta put orange plugs on the Optimus. Otherwise, it's not gonna clear. And I said, all right, so we gotta tool that up? Said, yeah, we're gonna spend all that money to tool up those the little plugs that go in there and we gotta manufacture them? It's crazy. So I says to him, I says to him, I says to him, I says, uh, what if we just paint them orange? Like, after the gun's just been firing, you know how sometimes it's so heated that it glows because the metal is about to melt. He's like, yeah, you think we can get that through? Maybe, and that's why it's orange. So this is one of my favorite figures simply because I, I had a little hand in just the detail of that orange tip. I love that guy. All right. I mean, we have come a long way from Revenge of the Fallen to Studio Series. Now, while Studio Series does have a ton of detail, what is it missing? And this again goes to the parts. It's missing a ton of articulation that the Revenge of the Fallen has. I would say the articulation and the parts count on this is comparable to that really crappy Voyager from 
the first movie that 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 figure just kept getting repainted like every film Revenge of the Fallen Dark Moon that Optimus just kept getting repainted with a new f oh we'll give him a new face we'll give him new guns it's just you know the which one I'm talking about it's the it's the shitty Optimus Prime where the smokestacks become the guns it, that's what this is comparable to and I would even say this is a little bit smaller but everything on this figure seems to be a scale. He's got the abs, which was a new design for uh, Dark of the Moon. It was just like a little detail they added. He's got the guns. He's got the jetpack. Now I'm looking at this. So as far as the tech spec, there's just a sentence. Optimus Prime blasts into battle using his jet wing tech. To take out the driller tearing through Chicago. Tearing. So, all right. So the worm, as I called it earlier, is actually called officially the driller. It's capitalized. Driller. It's not trademarked. But it's officially the driller. So this turns into the trailer. And I wonder if the jetpack will fit inside. Ah, interesting. According to the instructions, it will. And it'll actually form the, uh, the top of the trailer. So you need one to, all right, so you need, you need the jetpack to form the full trailer. All right, so now that I see it, if I want to take this off, Just real quick, without getting into, I don't like doing transformations on this show. Sometimes they're, they just take too long to do. All right, so you see how that becomes the top of the trailer. And now the jetpack fits on Optimus Prime. You know, I bet this jetpack would fit really good on a G.I. Joe Sigma 6 figure. Just saying. <clears throat> All right, so I'm a little curious about this. So the third party one is really quite amazing in how it transforms. I wish I knew where it, it's buried somewhere. I wish I knew where it was. So, without look at the, looking at the instructions, I just want to see what we're working here with. Well, something oh oh it broke well shit look at that it broke you know why because that's supposed to come down so when I was a kid I always enjoy transforming things for the first time without instructions and figuring out the transformation on my own it was just my thing and uh, now I'm just frustrated because I try to do that as an adult, and guess what? It breaks. And that's what I just did. I just broke this toy. And that's a small ass trailer. Crap, 50 bucks, that is a clean break too. Huh, <sighs> all right. This might be a, it looks better in the package. You know what this is? This is a Spawn toy. That's what this is. This is a 1995 Spawn action figure where it looks better in the packaging, but as soon as you open it up, the thing just falls apart. Sorry, Todd. It's the truth. How you managed to get so many years out of that toy line, I don't know. <sighs> Although Spawn did pioneer variants, on purpose variants, which I gotta give him credit for. Spikes, no spikes, mask, no mask.
Now I'm just kind of disillusioned in this toy. Well, crap. I'm going to have to take it back, buy another one, and return it. That's a shame. Oh, all right. So this is not broken. This is a pin that appears to not have been screwed in all the way. Either it hasn't been screwed in all the way, or the pin is too short. And unfortunately, I don't have the tool because it's a flat top. I don't have the tool to screw it back in. Does look like there is also some, yeah, it actually, all right, it did break. Yeah, it did break. So if I, I can't stick it back in, and it will stay if I put some glue on it, but it won't rotate, and that's the thing. You need it to rotate. Well, that's really disappointing. You know, at least I got this through the Target buy one, get one 50% off, but now I gotta buy another one and then return the broken one. This is an unsatisfying cut the tape. You know what? I've had this for a few months and I haven't opened this yet. This is um, Zeta Toys uh, ZB03 Chronos. This is the Silver Bolt. Instructions, card, nice clean bag, lots of foam for protection. Ah, look at this. All right, Revenge of the Fallen Leader, masterpiece. This toy, I think, could fall into the masterpiece toy line, at least at the time it was released. I haven't gotten around to opening this because of this, and I'm gonna show you. Also, I lost one of the combiner limbs. It's packed away somewhere. So I can't form Silver Bolt without one of the limbs missing. I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's the torso. It looks good, though. I'm, I wasn't expecting to open this right now. It's been sitting here for a few months until I found the, uh, the missing limb. probably look for that. It's probably in the garage. <sighs> Alright, why don't you go back to sleep, buddy. I just need something. That Optimus Prime has left a really bad taste in my mouth. Alright, we got two awesome heads. Toy and show. I'm definitely going with the show version when I assemble him. Oh, big gun. Oh. Got, all right, so I guess that comes out to form the arm cannon. Not bad. Big gun. Gotta love big guns. He's got big feet. I like this little detail. There's like little thrusters in this in the bottom of the feet so you can blast off. That's the type of thing I think about. What's underneath? Yeah, I know they can see the surface stuff, but what's underneath? Nice hands. You know what, I think I might put this guy together even though I'm currently missing one of the limbs. I'm still not satisfied.
What else do we got here that we can open? Go back to your home. I hate putting out an episode that I'm not satisfied with. How about I give you a little tour? I recently put the lights in this case. Uh, all these here, these are actually samples. These aren't production versions. These are all samples from uh, Diamond uh, Produced by Art, Art Asylum. Uh, I am going to put in my FCFs in here. Look, one jet fire. Two jet fires. I have all three jet fires for some reason. I have a buddy who works over there, so he would send me all these. He's like, I don't want these in my house. You take them. All right. Oh, and down here... That's the bowling ball. That's one of the bowling balls. Uh, I believe there's four different kinds. These are all the old uh, Palisade statues. This one, this is the ghost of Starstream. This one is a piece of crap because that's not actually stone, that's plastic and it's so brittle. Clear, clear plastic is just super, super brittle. All right. We'll end it there. Uh, oh, by the way, these are the new dollar store figures. Go get them. They're really cool. I like them. All right, we'll end it there. It's cut the tape. We'll see you next week. I'll plan better for next week. It's a work in progress. If you want to yell at me for today's episode, you can email me at cutthetape at tftalk.net. I probably should have led with that because nobody's watching at this point. All right. Thank you. Be nice to each other. Register to vote. Peace.